Welcome to a short video on accounting for the fair value adjustment of depreciable property plant and equipment and the subsequent effects that need to be considered. The information that we have is that the date of acquisition is the 1st of July 2011. The equipment in the subsidiary has been accounted for using the cost model. Its cost is 210,000, accumulated depreciation is 80,000, thus leaving a carrying value of 130,000. The fair value provided is 190000 which means the asset is undervalued by $60,000. The remaining useful life is 5 years, with a zero residual and being depreciated using the straight line method. The company tax rate is 30%. We're going to be looking only at the entries in the worksheet in relation to this equipment. As it is undervalued, we need to make a fair value adjustment. On the date of the acquisition, the entries to record the fair value adjustment would be as follows. Debit accumulated depreciation $80,000 and credit equipment $80,000. This removes the accumulated depreciation account and reduces the equipment account to its carrying value. This makes the accounts easier to work with. We then debit equipment $60,000, which is the amount required to get the equipment from its carrying value of $130,000 to its fair value of $190,000. We then credit fair value adjustment, FVA, $48,000, which is the after-tax amount of the equipment, i.e. 1 minus the tax rate of 30%, so 70% multiplied by $60,000. We also credit deferred tax liability, which reflects the temporary difference caused by the revaluation. If you're not sure about this, deferred tax effects are covered elsewhere. For, for simplicity, the investment elimination entry is ignored, but it obviously would still happen. Let's now look at what happens on the 30th of June 2012, or one year after the date of acquisition. As the consolidation worksheet starts from scratch each year, we need to repeat the fair value adjustment. However, we also need to take into account the marginal depreciation effect. In the subsidiary, the equipment has been depreciated depreciated at $130,000 over 12 years, but for the group it is being depreciated at $190,000 over the same length of time. This means that the group should actually show an additional $60,000 in depreciation expense over 12 years, or $5,000 per year. The adjustment for this depreciation is simply to debit depreciation expense $5,000 and credit accumulated depreciation $5,000. Just like recording depreciation normally, but in this case, it is occurring in the consolidation worksheet. But there is an additional consideration that needs to be taken care of, and that is that there is a tax effect from this additional depreciation. The additional depreciation effectively lowers the group accounting profit by $5,000. Essentially, as the group profit is lower, the tax expense should be lower as well. With the 30% tax rate, the $5,000 additional expense lowers the tax expense by $1,500 which means that there is a credit tax expense 1500 The lower tax expense doesn't mean that you're actually paying less tax, or even that the tax authorities are giving you anything. So we wouldn't see debit cash here. Rather, we see a reduction in the deferred tax liability that was created by the fair value adjustment. So DTL is debited $1,500. Rolling forward another year, the fair value adjustments get repeated. The depreciation and tax effect is repeated, although tweaked slightly. In this case, we need to not only recognize the depreci depreciation expense for the current year, but also the effect of prior depreciation expenses on retained earnings, as well as a cumulative effect on accumulated depreciation. As two years have gone by since the date of acquisition, retained earnings needs to be adjusted to reflect prior year profit effects of this fair value adjustment and accumulated depreciation needs to show two years, worth of, two years worth of the additional depreciation. We do a similar thing for the tax effects, with last year's impact on profit showing up in retained earnings and DTL being adjusted for two years. A timeline helps explain this and I would urge you to use them when working on these sort of questions. On the 30th of June 2012, one year has passed, so there is $5,000 of additional depreciation which means there is a current expense of 5000 and the extra balance in accumulated depreciation should be 5000 On the 30th of June 2013, two years have passed, 
So there is an additional $5,000 expense from last year, shown up in retained earnings, due to the fact that the consolidation worksheet start from scratch. A $5,000 additional expense this year, and the extra $10,000 balance in accumulated depreciation. I hope that helped. If you have any comments, questions or feedback, you can either leave them here on this video or tweet me at Dr. Dave Bond.